Hi, welcome back to the channel and to the van conversion. Today's job is going to be all about fitting the first of our two roof lights, which is the Dometic Hecky Mini roof light. In the last video we've got two going in. One is the Fiamma one which is a turbo fan version which is uh, basically in like an extractor fan or it will blow fresh air in. The back one is more of a standard, um, it's Dometic, site, uh, Dometic Hecky Mini. So they come in a few different sizes. This is one of the smaller ones but that's just a nice little pop open simple reef light. So I'm going to start with that one and then we'll get to this one. So as I mentioned in one of the other videos, I think I bought two of these originally to do the two in. We were going to retrofit a fan into the front one if we needed it. A few people had advised putting the fan in and then the more I thought about it and the more I looked into it, the purpose built fan then was much better and it only worked out £50 more. So one of these has gone back um, but this one is staying put because it's going to be above the bedroom area and it just needs to be a nice simple one. Not much in the box. So the one thing with this one I noticed is that the actual profile of it is quite a bit more on top of the van. So it's more visible, so it depends how kind of low profile you want the van to look. I don't really want it to look like a fully fledged motorhome, but I think because it's quite small and it's right in the middle of the van roof, uh, it's still going to be fairly discreet. That's the top section, oh and the inside section, and we've got the inside bit which is the roller or pleated blind and mosquito net type thing. Let's get that out of the way before it gets covered in silicon. Okay, so that's our inside part, which secures up. So this design, from what I can tell, just sandwiches the roof, and clamps down onto the roof, and of course there's a, a ceiling element to it as well. So in the first video, earlier on today, I've cut and prepped up all the openings. Uh, so we're kind of fast forwarding through a lot of this. We, we've got our opening measured up, cut from the outside, cleaned up with the file, painted the edges, and because we're a panel van, we've got this sort of uh, ribbed roof, we've filled in the valleys to give us a flat surface on the top to bond this one to. Well, I'm going to get it out first, get it up on top, sit it on just to make sure everything fits, and then it's fairly straightforward from what I can tell. We need to put a decent bead around it and then clamp it down. One thing we do need to do is trim. There's these little lugs here which almost act like the spacers, and they need to be trimmed bearing on the thickness of your roof. But for this bit, every van's going to be different. You might have a flat roof fan, or even a, you might be putting it into a existing motorhome in which case happy days you just got a flat roof and you don't have to mess around with this but um, because we've got all these sort of undulations we've built the subframe to go underneath which I did in the last video and we've filled in the valleys above but what we do need to do is make sure we've got an accurate measurement of how thick our builder of the roof is going to be so if I can hold this still it's just easier said than done Measuring from where it's going to sit onto to the underside of here, which in our case is 45 mil. Actually, on the underside of here, we're going to have our tongue and groove panelling, which is 8 mil. So we need to account for that as well. So 45 plus the 8 mil takes us to 53. Box. The gap is 60 mil between the two halves, um, and then basically the top is propped up on these lugs at the moment. So we just need to shorten those by. Uh, what do we say? 53. So I'm going to take 7 or 8 mil off those so that we've got the thickness of our roof. Just 
to kind of mock up how it's going to look. I've opened up the roof light, all the lugs are cut now. I've got an off cut of our cladding material, which is eight millimeters. Our frame, which is underneath, which is kind of the thickness of our insulation build up. And then if we put those under there, it's just sitting on there. So it's, it's about equal to both these. So all we've got to allow also for the 1.5 mil steel on the, the uh, van. So that's absolutely fine. That's gonna just slide in there and keep it nice and tight. So that's just an extra way we can double check. So what I've done is I've slotted that timber into the internal frame, which is a nice snug fit how it should be. To save me filming up on the roof too much, this is the channel which is designed for your silicon to go in. So you turn it upside down, put a really nice big bead of silicon there, then bed it down. And of course, you want it to be facing the direction of travel of the van, so that the front edge, it's almost like a, its own spoiler, um, and we'll make sure it's bedded in before we put it up there. The one other thing I just thought of is we need to uh, mock up the thickness of that panelling, because of course at the moment I'm not panelling the roof, so it won't hold it tight. So I need to cut a few slithers of that 8 mil. Sorry, it's a bit bright. It's close, but it's catching on something. Ah, it's just catching on the roof. It's because we're so close to these, there's almost two skins of metal to get past. Yep. It's a dry fit this as well to make sure that goes in. Good. And then of course we'll shim it under with our cladding. Nice. So I'm gonna go back up and put that bead around there. Clamp it up and then I'll go back up and put another final neat bead around and we'll tool that to get it all smooth and uh, looking fine on the outside. It's not raining yet. So a nice generous chunky bead of uh, sealant all the way around and I can feel it just starting to bed down there and like I said what we'll do is we'll go up there with a finer, I ended up chopping the nozzle off just to get a really thick bead, I'll, when I put the new cartridge in I'll get a nice narrow tip, I'll go around and then I'll just go up with a silicon tool and get a nice neat uh, finish up there just to help the water run off and just to keep it tidy. Nearly all of the builds I've seen where they've fitted roof lights, they just absolutely smeared the sealant on there and like smoothed it out with fingers. It just looks like a mess. Even though you don't see it, you might as well have a bit of pride in your work and do a proper job. You never know, you might have to silicon a bath one day and then you won't get away with sloppy fingers smearing it out. So I don't think it needs it, but I'm going to put a little bit of sealant where the wooden frame is touching the roof. Uh, it doesn't really need it for strength. What it does is it means it cut out on risk of any squeaking with the wood against the metal as you're driving along. Okay, I won't know until I get up there whether it's pulled it down tight, but it has, it's clamped in our eight mil pieces. So we know that it's gonna fit tight against the new ceiling. But we're gonna have a look outside, make sure it's all nice and tidy. Now unfortunately, it didn't go quite as planned. When I went outside, I should have checked it first. The top section wasn't sitting quite tight on the front left corner. Everywhere else is fine. So I think I need to cut a little bit more off the lugs. I think it's probably better to take a little bit more off than you think because it gives you a little bit of leeway to, uh, to clamp it down. Found the reason. Didn't even cut that one off. 
I knew it wouldn't be straightforward. Oh well, there's your tip. Make sure you check your lugs are all cut first. For the second time, oh, I'm gonna go up now and put that new bead up there to tidy it all up and leave it all nice and neat. I have to open that so I can access the sides. See it? Done. It's pretty painless. I would say that that is one bit that if you want to do the job properly, you might as well finish it properly. And just some smoothing tools. You can get all sorts of um, brands of these. These are just screw fix ones. I'll put some uh, a link below to uh, some similar to this. They just help. You, know, you don't end up covered in the stuff. And that, that sicker flex is actually a lot more sticky and harder to tool than normal silicon but just with some warm soapy water and those tools you can get it pretty smooth and a nice neat finish. I'll try and poke the camera out of that hole and give you a look at how I've finished it and how neat or how neat uh, the finish has been left. I have no idea if you could make that out but it's just a nice finished um, concave sort of bead on there. I think it was a 14mm radius on the front, 16mm on the back because it's quite a big scooped back and the sides was tiny because it was quite nice and flush so it's a 4mm tool. Right we may as well see the job to the end and put this blind up although I don't really need it up and I'll probably take it down soon anyway but to give you an idea I'll hold it up So it does just about hold up there actually as a friction fit. I'll hold off on those clips and we'll put them up once the ceiling's in. Seems a little bit odd that you can see these screws inside here. Um, and I've double checked and it doesn't show that there's any covering strip or anything like that. So maybe that is just how it is. It's just the way it is. Unless they assume you're gonna have that across most of the time and you wouldn't see in there. So this is what I'm talking about, just the fact that you can see in here and see these fixings just seems a little bit, I don't know, crude and unfinished, but that is all the way up. Maybe that's what you just have to live with. If anyone does have one of these already and can shine some advice, shine some light on this, see if that is meant to be how it's finished. But of course, you've got the blackout blind comes across here. Thank goodness, because it's right above a bed. It's a bit old school, that colouring as well, but it's me being fussy. And then netting across for when you want the bugs out. So as I said, that is number one of two. Uh, the second one is going to be in the next video, and that's the Fiamma Turbo Vent. And that one's going to be wired in as well in the future because it's got a fan built into it. So I think that's it. If anyone's got any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. And please make sure you subscribe if you want to see more of these sort of van videos as we progress through the build. And I think that's it. So thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time.